Jets lose 2-1 to the Edmonton Oilers in a very strange, strange game because I hate this game so much, so, so much. Like, I'm, I'm in pain after that one because I'm so angry about how this game is. Yet, I can't pinpoint why I'm mad. There was just something about this game, something that I, wa- I watched all, lo- all game long, really. And even though the Jets played good at times, I just... I didn't like this game at all, you know, and I streamed the whole game. If you haven't already checked my streams, turn on notifications and try to pop in every once in a while if you'd like. They're pretty awesome. I have recently been having Zach Nolan from the Nolan Hockey Podcast on. You should go subscribe to him. I'll put his link in the description of this video if you haven't already to go subscribe to him. Go do so. He also does Jets game recaps, so go watch mine and then go watch Zach's after this game because he's probably already has his uploaded because this is becoming the day after. He usually gets his up in uh, in the late night after the game, but nonetheless, I didn't like this game, and there, there were a lot of elements why I didn't like this game, and it wasn't just because the Jets lost, and it wasn't just because I think that it was a horrible game for the team, it was just because there was, again, me hearkening on individual performances costing this team, and what I mean by that is that you can have your defense play okay, even though they're not the greatest defense in the world, and the offense can carry, and Lauren Brossois and Hellebuck can do their own thing, but when the Jets lose sometimes, especially the last two years, there have been individual performances that you can just look at and pinpoint and be like, that was a turning point. That's what kind of cost us. There was a lot of bad play. And there was a lot of bad play from a lot of different players tonight. For one, Tucker Pullman, in my opinion, Zach thought he was invisible. In my own opinion, I thought that he was invisible, kind of invisible, but not invisible because every time he, I saw or noticed him, he made a bad play. In the first in the first period, he makes a horrible pinch and comes in from his the blue line to the slot to try to keep the puck in. Even though Connor is right there and at least can fight for the puck, and you know Tucker Pullman can at least tra- get transition to the neutral zone. And it's just not a play you make. Like you don't pinch that far unless you're like in the center of the off and of, of the zone, right? Like you're not coming over from the far right corner of the of, uh, of the ice to come to come to the slot to pinch. That's a dumb dumb move. Almost anyone will tell you that it's just not smart, especially com- where he was and everything. And it bite bites the. Gen- in the ass and it comes in on 201 and luckily Lauren Bossois is able to bail them out and there were plays like that consistently that happened where Pullman just gave up a lot of 201 opportunities and so did Morrissey in my opinion and also talking about Morrissey holy crap like this kid uh, he needs to stop shooting the puck I don't know how Josh Morrissey even has like 15 points because it feels like every time this kid shoots the puck it's either three feet wide it's left or right or hell even over the glass like it is so it's just not fun to watch him play anymore. It's sad. Every time he shoots the puck, there's like not an ounce, a bone in like anything, any amount of anything, a faith in him scoring in my body when he shoots the puck. Like none. It could be a wide open net with bodies just go in front. And I would still be like, nah, there's no way. There's no way he scores. I just have no faith in Morrissey lately. Um, last few games, I think almost a lot of Jets fans can agree with that statement. And... I just, I didn't like it, and I'm coming back to this arc again, I think that Paul Maurice needs to pull out a defender, not for the whole season, but at least for a game or two, and put Ville Hainola in, because something needs to change with his core, there's just so many bad performances, and Ville Hainola has just been very good with the Moose, and it's something you do in the NHL, when you have a young guy on an NHL team playing well, he gets called up, play him for a game, there's no harm in it, and it shakes up the team and gives guys a day off, Morrissey just is not cutting it right now, and Honestly, another thing I want to talk about is that Neil Pionk played 27 minutes tonight. And I think that that's a positive. Not because I think Neil Pionk should carry the workload that much, but Josh Morrissey shouldn't either. And I like that it was a different player and that Josh Morrissey wasn't the leader of an ice time for the defensive core. I don't think it's smart to keep making him do that. And I like that that was a different change that Paul Maurice did. I also like that Paul Maurice is starting for the second game in a row to roll out the second unit as the first unit for the power play. The second unit is way better. And you can see that because now instead of starting the power play off shit and finishing strong, the Jets start strong and finish like shit because that's just what the Jets do. The Jets' second, first power play unit, or second currently now, or what I best I should say is the power play unit consisting of Mark Shifley, um, Mark Shifley, Blake Wheeler, Kyle Connor, um, Josh Morrissey, and Paul Stastny is just not cutting it. Wheeler and Connor suck at zone entries most of the time, and Shifley doesn't cut it either. Stastny is good presence in front, but, you know, you can't tip every shot on net and expect it to go in, and that seems like what the Jets were doing this game, and I, I just, I'm glad that Paul Maurice is finally using Nikolai Ehlers, using Pierre-Luc Dubois, Neil Pionk as that number one unit, because in my opinion, they are the most deadly guys on the power play for this so far for the Jets this year, and the second unit is the best unit, and I'm glad it finally is the first unit. A lot of units say in there in the words, there in the sentences, but I think it's a good way the power play structure, that's what I'm trying to say. And it comes back, coming back to this, like, my thoughts on, like, why I'm mad at this game, and it's, like, 
I don't know. Like, I, I can't really pinpoint it. There were just a lot of flaws in this game where I didn't like. Like, at first, when I watched that first third period, I was like, the Jets are going to come out hot. They're going to come out trying to chase and chase the Oilers and get a goal quickly. That's what they're going to try to do. And they did that. And at first, I was like, you know what? That first 10 minutes was good. And then I think about it more. Ah, the first seven minutes were more good. And I think about it a little more. Yeah, I would say maybe after the, you know, three minutes to four minutes into that period, the Jets were gassed. And they were gassed, other than that, up until the goalie was pulled. And even then, they were lucky to even have an opportunity to score with the goalie pulled because that offside challenge worked somehow. Like, it was so lucky that that happens. Like, I don't think I've seen a lot of plays with an empty net be challenged like that and, and um, get called back. So... Luckily, Paul Maurice gets another challenge where he wins, thank God, and the Jets have an opportunity, and also, I want to say this right now because it was pointed out to me, and it makes sense, it sucks that Shifley whiffed on that shot, but it bounced about an inch before it hit the, the puck was getting close to his blade, so because of the, uh, the blade of his stick, so because of that, I'm not going to hark on him for fanning on it too much because it just takes a horrible lucky, ba- horrible lucky bounce and are horribly bounced I don't even care anymore at this point my brain is fried from this game like I just feel so gassed after watching this one like the Jets just weren't the Jets in this game and I the reason I didn't make a video off of the last game was because my files were were done and in that game I would have said I liked the Jets play the offense was good they drove the play well and in this game there were at times where they drove the play well but in my opinion the first line was gassed the entire game Blake Wheeler especially was gassed like uh, compared to Wheeler last game and compared to this game, like, I know it was a back-to-back, so I'm not going to hearken on this, you know, that, that, that much, and I know it was a back-to-back, but my complaints don't really have anything to do with the fact that it was a back-to-back. It was just off of poor play from players that have made poor play decisions and the same type of decisions that were made in this game all season long. And, like I said, individual performances keep costing this team, and I just find that these, like, you know, like, I know there's no I in team, but they're... Individual performances can fuck up a team's like consistency and just their you know overall play, and I feel like that's what happens with the Jets a lot of the time. And I just don't think that this game was their best effort, even for a doubleheader. And I would like to see more of uh, the second line. I also would like to see more help for Pierre Dubois. I don't know how many times I saw him break through the neutral zone, make you know dodge a check, squeeze through a hit on the boards, keep the puck, ha- box out the player, and have no one to pass it to, and have to run out of real estate behind the net and get hit by two Oilers, and then the- lose the puck, and then the Oilers are on the attack. I don't know how many times it happened. I don't know how many times the Oilers swung the puck around to the Oilers because there was no one there because they were doubling up on one side in the offensive zone. And I don't like little plays like that. And it was little plays like that that kept the Jets from gaining a lot of offensive momentum consistently throughout the first and second and for most of the third period as well. If the Jets played a more cohesive, you know, were more awake, I feel like, it would have been a better game. So I think the Jets win this game, obviously, if they are not on a back-to-back. But they got to be a little bit more sharper than that because you can be gassed and still be sharp and try to win a hockey game. And in my opinion, the Jets were not sharp tonight. They were just lazy a lot of the time. And I know it was a back-to-back, so I'm not going to, you know, blame them too much for being lazy because I get it. But I just want to see them be more sharper. If you're going to be slow because you're tired, you got to play a smarter, defensive, slower type of game. And they did that for the first very well. But it didn't change. It changed that way in the second because the Oilers were able to, you know, ramp up a little bit more. And I think if the Jets were able to ramp up a little bit more, um, the Jets might have won this game. But nonetheless, credit to where credit is due. McDavid was McDavid. And that leads me into the fact that I want to talk, end this video on a the gem performance of the night, I feel like. And I think that that was Lauren Brassois. Lauren Brassois was, in my opinion, although he let two goals in from Connor McDavid, one, that first goal bounces over Josh Morris. He's stick to McDavid wide open, and he shoots, beats him. Sweet sn- sl- He slides the puck in right between the blocker and the pad, so it goes in. So on the far left, uh, right corner of the net, not that much you can do there. Hits the post basically and in. And then the second goal, the exact same angle as he breaks in off of a really dumb pinch by Derek Forbert at the center line, getting bod- uh, bodied up, and Neil Pionk having to come in and cover up. But it was too late because McDavid was already in full stride after three steps. And nonetheless... That ends up in that goal. Other than that, though, this game could have been 5-1 for the for the Oilers. I think Lauren Massois kept them in a lot of the time. There were a lot of two-on-ones, a lot of three-on-twos, and he really stood his head for this game. I know he faced the least amount of shots, but the Jets didn't. The Jets may have had more shots, but the more dangerous chances came from the Oilers consistently throughout this whole game. So I want to end that on a positive note because I feel like Lauren Massois was the Jets' best performer tonight, and he was just having another solid performance against his old team. And happy to see Lauren Massois continue to be a good goalie, even though he gets the L in this game. It wasn't an opinion it's really deserved because the team 
seemed kind of wasn't that great in front of them. But nonetheless, let me know your thoughts on this game as always. What were your thoughts? If you're an Oilers fan, if you're a Jets fan, let me know all your thoughts about this game down in the comments section below as always. If you're a fan of hockey and a fan of the Winnipeg Jets, but more importantly, a fan of the hockey regardless of the team you root for, definitely consider dropping subscriptions. We're pushing that 1K mark, and it really does help the channel grow a lot, and I'm really hoping to get there soon to really help. You know, it's a big milestone, and I can't wait to reach that with this channel, and I really do appreciate all the support you guys have been giving. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already, link in the description. Follow Zach, uh, subscribe to Zachary Nolan on the Nolan Hockey Podcast. He joined me on my last stream. He's a great guy, like I said, posting uh, lots of content. His video will already up by the time this one's up, so watch that if you after you're done watching this. He's a great video, so definitely go drop in the subscription. We've got a fellow Jets ch channel trying to help each other out, so good uh, good guy. Definitely go drop in the subscription. Thank you so much for watching. Peace, love, and positivity as always. I will see you guys in the next video. Go Jets, go.